It's the Oslo 2012 keynote. Matt Newman opens, followed by special performances from Ed Brill, special guest Ted Stanton, and Stuart with the demos. Produced brought to you by Spike Studio. Social software and having a look at how you can implement that software within your organization, I'd strongly recommend that you go and have a look at Michael Sanson's session. Um, out the front, of course, we have our fantastic sponsors who have made this entire event possible thanks to their generous donations. So, as you are aware, this is a free event. Without the sponsors, we really would not be able to put this, this event on. Um, the event is, of course, the responsibility, or it's brought to you by a group of people. Around the room, you're going to see some people who are in some black polo tops. Where are you guys? Stand up. Adrian Randall. Scott. Scott's down the back there. Karen and Steve Hooper. They're there as well. John Stockbridge is here, Tony McPhail, of course, and Terry Boyd. Um, my name's Matt Newman, and I'm the one who keeps them all amused. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a couple of things that we'd like you to have a look at over the next couple of days. Here we go. So everyone would be aware already of the Oslite website. So at oslite.org is, of course, everything we need to know about this conference, including the agenda. For those of you who have a mobile device, if you have an iPhone, iPad, Android device, etc., if you just put slash mobile on the end of oslock.org, uh, we've got a great system that's been set up for us by one of our great sponsors, Salient Solutions Mobileite, and you'll be able to have uh, mobile access on a portable device to the entire agenda, speaker list, and bio list um, just by browsing to oslock.org slash mobile. It'll ask you to log in. It's the same username and password that you've used to log in to the website previously and update your own profile. Um, the server is just www.oslog.org without any HTTP. Once you put those details in, so your email address, your password, www.oslog.org, you'll be able to browse through all of that information on your mobile device. And of course, all of that information matches what's currently in the conference guide. So everything is all up to date. Um, also, thanks to one of our other great sponsors, ISW, we have a connection site which everyone here has access to. So, by registering for Oslo 2011 or coming along, of course, now to Oslo 2012, you automatically have access to our IBM Connections community, the Oslo Connections community. Thank you very much, ISW, for hosting that and setting that up for us. But it's a fantastic resource. Um, at the end of the conference, we're going to post all of the conference slides on there, so you'll be able to jump on, download the slides, have a look at the presentations. There's some great forums and blocks that are happening on the community as well. And what we're trying to do with that site is an extension of what's happening here over the next two days. So we want to build the community. We want to meet, share, learn, not only physically here at the conference, but also, of course, online using the Connections community. And for those of you who are on Twitter, if you'd like to use the hash Oslo 12 hashtag, and we'll try and see if we can get Oslo uh, trending over the next couple of hours. Um, with that, that's everything that I've got to say. Thank you so much for coming along. Um, I'm sure that you're going to have a fantastic time. Don't forget that there is also a social side to this conference as well. So if you'd like to come along to the Nerd Girl session at lunchtime today, of course this evening we have our social evening which is in the boat builders which is literally at the exit here and around the corner um, so you'll be able to join in chat with a few people exchange some ideas and discuss maybe what you've learned over the last um, day or so and then tomorrow we have this week in lotus live from oslife happening during lunch as well so there's a lot happening over the next couple of days it wouldn't have happened without the generous support of all of our sponsors and the awesome work that's been done by the organising committee. So if you have the opportunity to buy any one of here tonight, make sure it's the organising committee that you buy one for. <laughs> and with that, I'd like to introduce Mr. Ed Brill and Mr. Ted Stanton from IBM, who are going to present the Oslo 2012 keynote session. Thanks.
email. Yeah, we still um, do a lot of email. Uh, email's not dead. Uh, I don't want you to walk away with the impression of email being unimportant, but it's uh, less important. And we'll talk today about how social businesses change the way that we use email back to where it was originally purposed as a one-to-one -one, uh, asynchronous communications tool. Um, there's this phone thing too. Um, I guess you know if you want to call us, good, but uh, um, that's my same time number anyway. And you did put the SUT numbers in there, right? Yeah. So, um, so that would bring my mobile or wherever I am in the world. And uh, so, um, very connected. Happy to connect with you. Happy to continue the conversation uh, today here in Melbourne, tomorrow here in Melbourne. Okay. So, um, what I'd like to start with is some high-level vision stuff. Then we're going to do some demos. Uh, then we're going to talk more about product specifics. Ted's going to talk about some other customers. Um, the ABS, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot this part of my script. Uh, the key cards were supposed to be here. Um, the ABS uh, are here today. They're going to speak more about what it means to be a social business uh, this afternoon at 3 p.m. Yeah. Uh, right. um, so um, if you want to learn more about uh, one of the sort of homegrown marquee customers for um, IBM as a social business, uh, that, that video was a really sort of great way to kick that off. And Ted's going to show you some more and talk to you about uh, some other customer examples. So um, we believe that we're in a new era of computing, and it's the era of social business. And it's kind of the fifth wave of um, computing after mainframes and part metal and then PCs and then the internet. Um, you know, for a while it was Enterprise 2.0 or Web 2.0. That's really become the language of social business. And what we mean by that is not just the Facebook and Twitter accounts. So as much as I would like to connect to you in both of those things, being a social business is about much more than having a presence through those two online uh, consumer-ish tools. It's really about embracing the culture of being transparent and being nimble uh, and being able to embrace uh, the input of the market and the feedback of the market. Um, uh, you often hear custom companies are saying, well, I'm not really sure where social business fits for us. And the reality today is it's not a choice. It's not something you get to opt out of. It's happening. It's, it's out there. Your customers are talking about you. Your partners are talking about you. Your suppliers are talking about you. It's just a matter of how and where you're going to embrace and be part of that conversation. And it's been driven by technology, but also obviously by culture as well. The technology is changing three things. Um, when I first started doing a presentation on Web 2.0 and blogging and social media at the time, I used to highlight old ways and new ways of buying. And the way that we buy has completely changed. Not just in the consumer world of I'm standing in a store and I can find out if the price I'm about to pay for an item is really a good price or not, um, but also you know, how do I do that in a business to business context? How do I do, know who I should do business with and whether a trusted and reliable partner and supplier um, all that information is now out there today. Um, it's not just a random shot in the dark of who I want to do business with. How do I work? Who do I want to work with? How do I have access to that work information uh, pervasively, globally, uh, has completely changed? Um, I, like most of the members in the US, have no permanent office. Um, I work from you know, wherever my iPad and my MacBook are. Uh, that's been true now for three or four years. Um, on a, a, a very broad scale, um, but a decade from now. And you know, I, I like to think that if I can run a multi hundred million dollar business from a, a notebook, then you know, it's, it's true in any organization. Um, so, this idea of being able to collaborate from anywhere in time, well, except for when my mom called at one in the morning, that wasn't so good, but um, you know, time is, uh, from any number of devices. So, um, I think we're now up to nine Apple devices in my household. Uh, zero Windows devices, uh, just for the record, and uh, you know, very able to continue to collaborate um, and do my job for anyone. And then how I engage. Um, so many of you probably know that the first year we had a new CEO take over at IBM, Ginny Rometty. Uh, Ginny is a, a, a lifelong IBMer and has led a variety of roles within the organization. Uh, very, very successful woman. She's very engaging. Um, uh, I had the chance to meet her in Chicago a few weeks ago. Uh, but on the first day of her new job, what she didn't do was more interesting than what she did do. Unlike the five previous six previous chairmen we've had in the last 40 years, she didn't say, dear colleague, here's my, my idea for IBM, email. None of us got an email from Jenny Hermetti on January 1st. Instead, she went to her connections blog and she posted a three-minute video 
talking about her goals and objectives for IBM. That video has been viewed by almost every IBM employee now. Almost everyone. There was no email saying, hi, I'm the new president and I'm here to tell you what to do. It just happened viral. There was no notification. There was no hint that it was out there. We just became a social business. So if the CEO is going to engage that way, and Ms. Lomeni says that one of her main objectives for IBM ourselves this year is to make sure that throughout the entire $100 billion organization that we are practicing what we preach in social business. And that that's going to be from the top to the bottom that we're going to be engaged. Does that mean she needs to be on Twitter? No, not really. It means that she needs to be engaged in the conversation within the organization with our, our key stakeholders, <coughs> with our customers, with our suppliers. And that's far more important than talking to you know, some random soundbite every single week. Twitter clearly has its place, don't get me wrong. Uh, and I appreciate those of you that interact with me that way. But it's just one channel. We have to embrace all the channels of being a social business. So companies have changed the way they operate as a result. Um, one of the things that we've seen uh, through social business is uh, that uh, hierarchies are breaking down very dramatically in a lot of organizations. Now, there's a place for our hierarchy. You still have to have somebody to make decisions and whatever. But um, employees are self-forming teams. They're doing sort of talent as a cloud within organizations of who they want to work on a particular project. I may have said this in, the, in the, uh, August of Oslo as well. For me at IBM, my internal reputation is made more by the fact that I engage with you all as customers and partners than it is for the fact that I run a 1% portion of IBM's business, right? which is what my day job is. Right? But people know me more as an as a advocate for social business, as a, as a person who's passionate about those notes, who understands our mobile strategy. Those are the reasons that people engage with me at IBM, not because I just so happen to be the pointing head of the, um, the, you know, the pyramid for running notes and down um, so employees self form teams. They say, hey, I want to hit real on this. may not be my job, maybe. That's fine. Um, there are lots and lots of IBMers I'll never meet who I know because of their digital reputation. And that digital reputation is really important. Every one of us is now branding ourselves individually in a world of social business, and that's fine. Because you go from a, a culture where in the past your knowledge and your power was, how do I protect what I know? And today, the culture in most organizations is, how do I share what I know? The younger generation, the digital natives that we're bringing into organizations today, this is what they've grown up on, is the idea that they're living their lives online. And they want to do that in the business world as well. This is actually what has driven the change within our own organization is IBM. And IBM is the expectation, sorry, two microphones, can't stop that. Uh, is the expectation that we'll have those same kind of tools in the workplace. And then customers as well are changing the way that they interact with you as a company. They're going to expect to be able to find out more about you as, as an organization than ever before. They're not just reading your press releases. They're not just checking uh, your marketing websites. They're finding out from real customer testimonials. They're finding out from real world case studies what the success of your products are, the success of you as a partner is, and whether they should do business with you. And then the partners are becoming extensions of that enterprise. How do we bring in the right people at the right time to help us complete a project? Um, a completely different method than having to work independently uh, as was done in the past. So forward-looking companies are embracing this opportunity and the challenges of it. There's no magic formula for social business that is somehow, you know, going to apply the same to every single organization that's represented here in the room. But if you take these principles and you take some technology and you take some, some business and some cultural change and some sponsorship, you can get some really tremendous uh, results around adopting to where a social, set of social business technologies can help your business grow. And it's that innovation that you want to capture in your organization that's going to make um, a very key difference. How, is, how, how that's going to create business value and uh, provide advantages to you uh, as, as an organization. Innovation is the thing that makes companies differentiated from each other uh, in 2012. Right? Everybody can manufacture a widget. The, the science and the technology of um, you know, making products or making solutions is not that different from company to company. So it used to be that companies would say, well, our difference is our people. It's a little bit more than, a, than, than that today. It's not just our people. It's how we leverage the knowledge and the expertise and the things that those people do and know and what they want to work on. That's the difference in companies today and that makes them innovative and successful um, versus their competition. So um, the idea there is to tap into, and we've used this term in this market quite a bit, the, uh, 
idea that organizations collected intelligence. How do you tap the wisdom of the crowd? How do you get ideas from anywhere in the organization? How do you get ideas from your ecosystem? Uh, just after Oslo in uh, August last fall, <coughs> fall of my hemisphere, kind of sorry, I keep getting that in my head. Uh, uh, last August, we um, introduced IBM Export Server. And if anybody was in the room, um, if you remember that um, that was the first place I think I announced that name out loud. Um, you kept pushing me to announce the name of the social edition as well, but I wasn't ready for that one. Uh, but IBM Export Server, I think, was the first time I mentioned it, it was at, at Oslo. And that was a server that was built and spacked by you, not by me. We wrote blog entries, we went up and talked to customers, we went up and talked to partners, we came to events like this, and we got that feedback from the marketplace. How do we need to sell down to a server differently to expand the marketplace? And it's been very successful in the, the six months we've been in the market, five months we've been in the market. Um, sales have finally uh, taken off as people have become aware that there's this new opportunity to sell down to applications into a different marketplace. I'll talk more about what export server is and what it means this afternoon in my uh, breakout session. But the idea was we tapped into that wisdom of the crowds. We said, what would you do differently if you were IBM to sell that more domino? And that was the answer that came out. I mean, I had smart people on my team, but they just took what we told us and they made it successful. So our um, uh, uh, global business services organization has a great white paper on this. Um, and that URL should be a slash collective intelligence. It just talks about where CEOs and CIOs see the idea of social business applying uh, into their organizations, how we can adopt uh, this technology. And this is where, so you can see all the different business processes that can that you can apply the, the methods and the capabilities of social business to around customer care, around market segmentation, around advocacy, uh, around uh, sales um, and sales uh, uh, performance, around onboarding of talent. I was thinking about this the other day, and there are many IBMers in the room who have been with um, IBM since uh, you know, we were Lotus in a lot of cases 15, 20 years ago. When I joined Lotus, we went to new hire training and sat in a room for two weeks straight uh, just to get all the sort of knowledge transfer that we would need to do our job. And today, all of that, you just pop right into you know, a community of interest that you get propped into on your first day as an IBMer, and you have access to all that information and self-administered um, learning. Uh, we, you know, still do team-oriented work, et cetera, but it's just completely different the manner in which you can onboard great employees into an organization and develop their skills uh, much more rapidly. And then, uh, as I mentioned with the Gini Remedi example, executive communication is a great place for where social business matters. I read uh, somewhere on a tweet this morning from one of the analysts that I follow that CEOs that tweet um, are more admired than CEOs that don't, that there's actually a positive halo effect of being a chief executive on Twitter, whether or not you're actively engaged in the conversation, you have you know, underlings to do it for you or whatever, um, that there's, there's a marked difference in market perception just by being accessible, being transparent, being part of the crowd, um, and not just sitting in the uh, proverbial ivory tower. So transformation, um, this isn't just about tools, right? I mean, we, we have lots of tools, we've made lots of tools that I've for many years, but it's really about the, the platform overall. So how do you put in the underlying investment that will allow your organization to engage, act, discover, and, uh, sorry, I didn't see the wrong word, reach, discover, engage, and act. Okay, there is the right word. Sorry, I got right <coughs> um, you know, so the, the technology is really designed to help you do all four of this, those things, expand and reach out to uh, whatever device, whatever location, anywhere, at any time. Um, discover, uh, we have bought something on the order of 30 or 40 analytics companies at IBM over the last few years. Um, predicting analytics uh, has become a major part of what we're focused on in adopting social business. Uh, consumer in insight or sentiment analysis, I'll show you some examples of that uh, later in the presentation. Also an important part of the story. So this isn't just about you know making sure the information is out there and somebody's <coughs> talking about it. It's about what do you do, how do you predict what happens next, and how do you make the right offer to the right customer. Um, and then uh, uh, engage in the right context, how do you find the right conversation, how do you know what's meaningful, how do you turn off what's not meaningful, uh, and pay attention to only what's relevant. So um, I got about a slide ahead of myself there, and <laughs> started talking about what we provide in terms of capabilities for reach, engage, and discover. Um, and again, we'll get into more specifics of that uh, here in a little bit. <coughs> So um, I guess to sort of wrap this 
uh, part of the presentation, and then I'm going to have uh, Ted to give you some specifics about uh, customers in the real world are doing this. You know, the, the idea of transformation is not always an easy thing for, for we as IT professionals to adopt. Uh, we tend to think of ourselves as doers and not change agents at times, but successful people in IT, just like in any part of your business, are those change agents, are those sponsors, are those advocates, are the evangelists. So I encourage you to take what you've heard today and what you'll continue to hear from me, from Michael Sampson, from the rest of the team throughout the next two days, um, and you think what your job is, what your role is in IT, what your role is in your company, and how you can help bring this transformation to a social business. How do you improve things like customer care and stuff? How do you do better on product and service innovation? How do you help optimize the workforce? When I was in IT now 20 years ago, um, uh, one of the projects that I got handed uh, in 1992 or 93 was the first connection for my company uh, to the internet. Uh, we were going to put in a you know, T1 circuit or whatever. Uh, how were we going to leverage that as an organization? What were we going to do um, to, you know, to, to be a connected organization? And you have to really take yourself far back when I'm talking about 1992. And one of the things I put on the project plan was to go meet with HR and talk to them about putting email addresses on business cards. Now, in 2012, that sounds like ridiculous to even be talking about. Of course, you would put your email address on a business card. But in 1992, that concept didn't exist, right? The, the commercial internet had really only just come, come about that very year, and most people didn't know, you know that email was a tool that would ever connect them to a world outside of their company, even if they were using uh, email with it. So what we did, it was, I was at a company that was growing very, very rapidly. We were hiring new employees on the rate of 10 or 20 a week. And uh, what I worked out with HR is, as part of their onboarding, uh, we would assign their email address right away and uh, communicate it to HR even before the employee had walked in the door. And so they would come in uh, to the company and they'd get their business cards on the first day and have their email address on the post. I can't remember what it was that. But the minute they started giving that business card to their customers, they started engaging with customers more directly. And that's still happening 20 years later, right? Email is still the number one tool we're going to use to connect a salesperson to a customer. Um, and it's going to continue to be that way for much longer. But just that little extra step on my project plan 20 years ago, I as an IT guy never had to worry about what was going on in, in hiring and HR or whatever. But I went and had that one meeting and it changed the way that the company was doing business. So you can do that. All right. So let's take a look at some customers. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Ed. So when, um, when I first got here, uh, yesterday, in fact, I was showing a slide that I prepared for uh, taking through some customer scenarios. And I had about a dozen of them. And they said, you know, that's fantastic, Ted. But can you narrow that down to just a handful? So what I'm going to take you through for the next 10 minutes or so is really an update on four different customers that I've worked with helping them understand how they can become a social business using our technologies and our services to help them leapfrog uh, the competition. Uh, while I am only taking you through four, again, I have a variety of customer examples. I've been working with probably well over maybe a hundred different companies over the last four or five years, um, really helping them understand the benefits that they can get by starting to leverage more social capabilities and social concepts. Uh, within their organization as well as outside of their organization. Uh, so the first one I'm going to take you through is uh, Bear. I, don't, uh, I assume everybody in the room is probably somewhat familiar with uh, Bear. Uh, if you're not, they're really made up of three different uh, divisions. Uh, a very, glo very large global organization. I believe they have roughly uh, 113,000 employees across uh, Bear Material Sciences, uh, Bear Crop Services, and Bear Healthcare. And we first started working with them uh, back in 2009. And I remember specifically sitting in the room with their material sciences uh, CIO. And he was right on the money for 2009, which was, Ted, I need to make sure my organization can adhere to this type of technology. I need to make sure that the company has the culture and support from senior leadership if we're going to move forward and start to look at these social technologies and social concepts. So right off the front, he had, you know, one of the key things that we talk to organizations about is can your culture, that's defined by the organization, the country, or some other factor, 
can you adhere, can you adapt, will you embrace these technologies? I'm not saying that every uh, CEO has to be out there and be active. Ginny is probably, in fact, uh, IBM's best advocate now that we have inside the organization around leveraging and using these technologies. But the reality is, while Sam didn't start out his day doing a blog and thanking people on their board as Ginny does now, um, he embraced it, he sponsored it, he put programs around in place, and that's what's key. Uh, and this is actually, a, in fact, it's a quote, I probably should have put it in quotes up there, which is, uh, culture eats strategy for lunch. Doesn't matter if you have the best strategy, you can bring Ed, right? Everybody's always picking Ed to join their teams because he is very focused, very good at putting strategies together. You can come up with the best strategy for your organization, but if your culture's not gonna be able to support it, you don't get that executive sponsorship, it's not going to be successful. So back in 2009, uh, uh, they started out looking at social technologies from IBM, started out at a pilot in their material sciences division, specifically in the research and development organization. They had some evangelists, they did some training. Uh, it took off from a global standpoint. In 2011 was really when they made some major changes and they saw the complete uptick of how the system was being used inside the organization. And, a couple, and, and the major thing that happened in 2011 was integration. They integrated directly with their, in, with their enterprise search. They integrated directly inside of their email infrastructure for all employees. They started to push this out on some different mobile devices. They started to put it where the people are working, where they're familiar with working. It wasn't just a destination website as many of these pilots do start. And that's the reality of how they do so. That's how it started inside IBM. Started kind of off to the side. In fact, now if you go to IBM's homepage, our corporate intranet, it's the first thing on the homepage. Where the people are. It's right inside of our email clients. Right? That was key to driving the adoption uh, at Fair. And yes, their CIO is in fact uh, an active blogger. Um, I think they have roughly 2,000 uh, communities uh, across Beer now, really trying to bring together these different teams. Again, very large global organization, three major business units. And if the last statistics are that I got from them is at least 50% or about 50% of all of their employees have done updates to their profiles page. So they're really starting to get the organization to in fact um, enter in their information update their information to make it to make them more discoverable as Ed said building out kind of a digital reputation for all the employees within the organization uh, second uh, example uh, continental um, this is actually somewhat of a fascinating company I think uh, you know last year IBM just celebrated our centennial 100 years within the business uh, continental I believe uh, was founded in 1871 so think about a very very uh, seasoned, I guess, company out there in terms of the, the number of years. And for people that are familiar with Continental, they, they're pretty much broken up into two major groups, uh, uh, the rubber division and the automotive division. They're building anything from tires to chassis to powertrains. Now, uh, another large global organization as well, and uh, I like this term that they use. They, use the term, they don't use the term silos because it tends to have a negative uh, uh, a negative feel to it. They use the word towers. Continental is built through towers of different departments, different organizations, and they like their tower structure. They like that reporting, they like that formality. But what they wanted to do was how can they move information and content and ideas across these different towers in a secure fashion? How can they start to leverage more of a network behavior to help build better solutions and better ideas uh, at Continental. And so what they actually came up with um, is a new platform. They call it Con Next, C-O-N Next. Um, very similar to our Connections Next. Um, but now they call it Con Next. And it wasn't just about the technologies and tools that they put out there. It was about the program and processes that they put in place. They have a, um, a legal framework, they have a training and support framework, and they have an information management rule-based system. Again, you gotta think of an organization that's been in these towers 
defined by the culture for years, and they want to keep information within these towers that's appropriate, that's confidential for that tower, but to be able to move the appropriate data that's not more freely throughout the organization. You know, there's a fantastic saying, I'm not sure uh, necessarily who came up with it, but uh, the idea that, you know, uh, content in rest is just a waste. Content in motion is what's key. So how can you get pieces of content put within the system, and how can it move around? How can it be discovered by a variety of different people in different departments? How can you easily share that information through a single clip? So that's what Continental is really focused on. Uh, uh, with their solution. The third one, I'm sure everyone's familiar uh, with 3M. Uh, they have about 75,000 employees, another large uh, global, uh, global organization. Uh, they have, I believe, somewhere around, or around the uh, number of 55,000 different products and over 100,000 different SKUs. Uh, all the way from things like scotch tape to uh, ace bandages, to adhesives, to insect repellent. 3M's business is about building new products and new services to go to market, either branded by them or sometimes more generally branded. Um, and what they were really focused on was how can they get their different teams working on these different divisions, and they're broken up into really six different uh, major divisions. I, I can't remember all six of them. But how can they get these different teams that are working together in very similar projects? Believe it or not, the, the, the division that makes uh, scotch tape is completely different from the division that makes uh, industrial adhesives. But there's some level of synergy between those two products and how they can be used. So how can they get those teams better interacting, better collaborating? Um, so they, we worked with them for uh, quite some time, uh, and they've done some very innovative things. Uh, they're very heavy users of the profile system. Having people be able to identify themselves as an expert in a specific domain. So 3M, their motto is three clicks. With three clicks within this system, they should be able to find the right person within that organization. And you can start finding that person by you know, filtering on the individuals or by filtering in on the content, which was key for them. What I mean by filtering by the content, which is being able to search for something in a certain domain, being able to find the information, but still within that three clicks, be able to pivot easily and find who that person is responsible for that information, and is that person the right expert for that specific domain. They have um, uh, over a thousand different communities, uh, ranging all the way from uh, a marketing community. They have a brainstorm station community where they're trying to get their employees to go out there and submit different ideas, different feedback. They actually developed a community, I guess they're, re they're renovating their uh, headquarters. They had over 1,500 people come in and provide feedback on things that they should do as part of their renovation project. They also have something out there, um, they, start to, they like to leverage the multimedia capabilities. It's something in fact uh, my boss has picked up and I'll tell you in just a second. They have a, do-it-yourself section for videos. Over, uh, I, I believe the number is over 3,500 videos at 3M by the employees have been uploaded for training, for enablement. This is how I do my job. Could be 30 seconds, could be five minutes long. Uh, when my boss heard that, um, uh, uh, Sandy, she said, you know what? Ted, you're, you and your team, I want you to go out there and I want you to generate as much videos as possible for the sales organization. That was our mission. It wasn't content, we used to do presentations, we used to work on white papers, it was no longer that. She said, I want you to go out there and I want you to generate videos and then I want you to figure out even if we can post them externally. And I don't know if many people have seen, um, uh, uh, but if you were to go out there and do a YouTube search uh, for SharePoint, Think about 10 down on that list, you're going to find a video called Connections versus SharePoint that was posted by someone on my team, Brendan Suffolk. So we're actually doing lots of even competitive videos. And actually, if you go a little bit stuck further, which is really nice with YouTube, um, you can actually open up and you can see if people have taken that video from YouTube and embedded it into other websites. And when we were looking at that and analyzing that, we actually found 
Uh, and during some reverse PS lookups, we saw, we saw this little domain and it looked a little familiar. And we said, geez, let's do a reverse domain lookup. Let's see if this video is getting posted. And sure enough, it was actually getting posted within VIA. Back in, uh, uh, in uh, early 2000, uh, late 2010, early 2011, I believe it was. And this is actually when we were working with VIA and it was still kind of in a pilot phase and we were really fighting for that social space. Who was going to win? Was it going to be SharePoint? Was it going to be Connections? Thank God we had that video out there, competitive video. It just basically showed, here's what you can do with SharePoint and some of the challenges, and here's how we make it easier from a social standpoint within connections. And getting that file we shared within uh, different organizations. Um, you can see uh, uh, Innovation Live, uh, three clicks away, um, I already talked about. Um, so just uh, 3M is again really looking at this platform, looking at becoming a social business again as leveraging innovation as the driving force. Um, the fourth one here I want to talk about, let me just switch over to a uh, video real quick. SXC Health Solutions is a leading provider of pharmacy benefit management services as well as healthcare information technology solutions. Our customers are federal, state, and provincial governments, health plans, as well as pharmacy benefit managers. SXC has been rapidly growing over the last few years. Our 2008 revenue is about $863 million, and we just increased our revenue estimates for 2009, and uh, we just recently made it to uh, Crane's Fast 50 with a five-year growth rate of just about 2,500%. Over the past few years, SXC has grown rapidly and has acquired organizations. So with that, it has become absolutely critical to retain that key talent in those remote locations, to connect with those, with those employees on a regular basis, to make these people feel as part of the SXC cultural fold is very important. And really, same time has done a, a really great job in helping them be a part of the connected SXC community. Same time has changed the way SXC really operates and does business. We can actually respond to RFPs quicker, we can resolve system issues before they become critical, and we can ultimately react faster. SXC is comprised of multiple PBX infrastructures. As we looked at same time, it really made sense to build and move forward on a platform that would ultimately take advantage of those multiple and disparate uh, infrastructures. So we didn't have to rip and replace any of the existing systems we had. And ultimately, with the potential use of same time unified telephony, we could actually remove uh, users' desk phone directly from, from their office. SXC has chosen to initially deploy two of the core functions within IBM Lotus Connections. That is the profile function as well as dog ears. One of the real benefits around the profile of the building community is to be able to search for the reporting structure and who reports to whom. So when you need to escalate an issue, you can do so. We're leveraging quicker with MSXC to collaborate as a community on projects and our RFPs. And we've seen that not only in its collaboration capabilities, its document management and workflow capabilities have provided us a platform that we can build on for, uh, for our accreditation projects. We've recently um, embarked upon a, a URAC accreditation project, and we leveraged this single standard solution versus employing and deep uh, several boutique offerings. There are many reasons that we elected to go ahead and move forward with the IBM collaboration suite. Number one probably is the enriched sense of community that we've gotten throughout the organization. Um, number two, we can gain access to information and gain access to people much, much quicker. Finally, our ability to extend collaboration out to our clients has also been a huge benefit that we've been able to realize um, over the course of this phase of our project as well as moving into the next phase. So that's really just a setup uh, SXC. And if you can tell from that video, it's, uh, it's about two years old. Uh, uh, people may remember uh, dog years. In fact, that was actually a research project uh, that I worked on back in 2005, and uh, 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 if people aren't familiar, in fact, I was the product manager for Lotus Connections when we went to market with it in 2007. I stayed on until uh, version 2.5 before uh, moving kind of into our consultative business. Um, but a couple things uh, highlight, uh, in fact, if you saw, um, 
And it's okay to raise your hand. Is anybody in here that use Outlook? I did not. Got one over there. Woohoo! But uh, if you notice that video, just to call it out, obviously people probably saw it. Yeah, yeah our solution doesn't agree with Outlook um, for anybody in the room that does actually, in fact, use Outlook. But a couple things that fundamentally changed from SCX from when that video was produced. Um, you heard about their forecast for budgets. I think their last uh, record in 2010 that they kind of published, I think they did $4.8 billion. And over the last five years, that's a 3,500% growth from their top line revenue for leveraging the collaboration solution. Now, of course, that, that, that you know leads into they've done some acquisitions. Um, I think you said something like they were in the top 25 fastest growing. Well, last year, they're number one fastest growing organization out there. Um, and I like to bring this one up because many people in the room probably haven't heard of SCX, but pretty soon, or at least now all, you all have, and pretty soon more and more people are going to start to hear about it and the value that they're using. Now, they're also doing something very, very unique and cutting edge. They're using the same technology internally when that video is made, they're now using it externally. They're using same time with their customers. They're using connections with their customers. In fact, they're looking to bridge these two environments together. They look at it from a view as they want any of their employees to be able to easily network and collaborate with any one of their customers. Now, what's interesting is that when you take the same technology, both internally and externally, it provides different use cases, as you can see out here, from an internal uh, and, a, and a business to consumer facing uh, solution. So there's different values that you're getting out of it. Um, and as I kind of highlighted a little bit earlier, you know, uh, I came here with in mind about 12 different stories I wanted to share about uh, organizations, and the team cut me down to four to reduce time. So uh, feel free, uh, I'll be up a little bit later today, I'll be here for the next few days. Feel free to come grab me if, if you want me to talk a little bit more about your specific industry or a specific role or function that you have within the organization. Uh, and with that, um, oh, one last slide, sorry, one last slide. Uh, my boss uh, would not be happy if I didn't cover this one. Um, one of the key fundamental things uh, that we like to talk about is this really two things. Uh, uh, helping organizations. One is you got to have the technology aspect of it. We've had that for uh, for years, as, as I just said. The second is how do you help the organization best use those technologies to optimize the benefits that they're going to get. So uh, last year we introduced what we call the social business agenda. It's a set of workshops that we provide all the way from helping organizations align their goals and cultures to understanding how they can network their business process to manage uh, risk to analyzing all their information and data using social network techniques. So again, it's really a set of workshops that we come in at no cost at IBM, uh, no cost to the customer, I should say. Uh, we big big investment from IBM. It's IBM's investment for our customers, no cost to you. Or we work with our partners on this as well to come in and really help these organizations understand and kind of map out some of the challenges they may have looking at these technologies and recommendations to overcome those challenges and ways to start to better use this technology embedded inside of your existing uh, business process or re-engineering a uh, business process in many cases to be more efficient using social technologies. Uh, and so with that said, I'll turn it back over to Ed.
Um, not relevant anymore. We're providing you the right solution, the right capabilities uh, that you need to be a social business uh, across all of these different areas. Um, obviously, Connection's key message for you today, from us, is to really understand how you Connections. Um, I don't think I've been in a position to announce this entitlement uh, uh, when we were in Sydney in August, but um, when we should go to Dabo 853, uh, we made available to you at no charge uh, connections files and profiles as part of your active uh, Nodes and Domino subscription contract. There's a session today, I think it's today, on um, other entitlements, things that you uh, have access to um, that uh, some of my colleagues are delivering. So things like the connections entitlement or traveler or some of these other components, mobile connect. You can go to sessions today and tomorrow to learn more about these things that you get from us uh, on Ted's credit card. Uh, and no additional charge. So um, uh, be sure to uh, uh, learn about that connections files and profiles uh, entitlement. In connections next, or um, connections four, which will come in the second half of this year, um, one of the key uh, things is this concept of an activity stream uh, that um, is part of the product today. But the activity stream in connections four is designed to take in content uh, from a variety of sources, not just uh, things that happen in the connection system but you can push alerts into it from SAP or Oracle or D2 or other systems, uh, from notes, from email, from lots of different places. So this activity stream becomes really a, a, a constant source of relevant news, not a flood, not the overload that we associate often with email, but really this, this kind of focused analytical content that's gonna tell me what I need to be able to do. Uh, another key of both connections for as well as the Node Social Edition we'll talk about in a little bit is the concept of embedded experiences, embedded applications. Um, Andrew Davis is here from my development team. Uh, um, very, very long fight for, for Andrew to be part of this, and it's probably going to delay our product uh, for him to be out of the labs. But um, uh, two sessions on the agenda today and tomorrow to talk about embedded experiences and some of the other new capabilities uh, in, in Notes Next, in iNotes Next, and in Connections Next. But also, he's going to do a session on things you can do here and now through some live text and some of the other capabilities as well. So I wanted to plug that. Um, this morning, I was uh, on a call pretty early back in the States where we were talking about um, uh, a capability we announced at Lotusphere last year and are delivering this year called Connections Mail. And this is in the, the category of social mail. So we want to reinvent the inbox. Um, if you go out and Google reinventing email or reinvented inbox, you'll find that we at IBM have been talking about this concept uh, probably for almost a decade now. Um, email, as, it, as we use it today, was invented in the 1960s. The inbox and folders metaphor, first in, first out, whack a mole processing, and this has been around for a very long time. And you know, gone are the days where people got excited when <laughs> a little pop up box come up, came up on the screen and said you had a new message, right? Um, but you do remember that. Um, so you're all laughing because you remember <coughs> it used to get Uber like that. Yeah. Um, so we think that the future of mail is social. Um, IBC, one of the industry analysts, happens to agree with us. Uh, one of the things you can take away from this conference is an IBC white paper called the future of mail is social. Um, what we're building and what I was on the call with the states on this morning is um, a capability for Connections 4 called Connections Mail that will surface your email from either Notes or Outlook, or Download or Exchange, I should say it the right way. Uh, into connections is just another capability. Um, it's very lightweight. We deliberately not provide all the features of that. It's just sort of forward reply, delete. Um, not a lot of the, the other stuff you're used to doing in, in email. Um, I see a lot of iPads and iPhones in the room. How many uh, have i devices? Um, I'm specifically thinking on iOS for, for a second. Um, people love the mail and calendar apps on the I iPhone and iPad. That your end users, if you hear from your CEO or whatever, loves it, right? But Traveler, one of the best things we ever built, uh, works great for the iPad. That, that calendar is just so clean and simple to use. Ever try to figure out how to counter propose a meeting on your iPad? Well, you can. How about if you want to delegate an individual meeting to somebody else? Can't do that either. But people love it, right? They think it's the easiest calendar they've used in so many years because we've done so much featureitis to our own product and now looking at everything else in the market, that simplification, less is more, is really, really an important concept. Right? So I love what Apple's done with that device. They've made a very conscious decision not to write our own apps on iOS because Apple does such a great job. And we made a very conscious decision to write our own apps on Android because Google does a horrible job. 
And there's no architectural changes, so I didn't want to sort of force the version number out there necessarily. Uh, in the German language, the word nine means no. Um, so I really don't ever want to ship a version nine personally. Um, not, not many software products ever use that version number. Uh, anyway, so we call it a name instead. But it's got no social edition. Uh, uh, integrating embedded experiences really is the key new deliverable uh, around good social edition, and Andrew will talk to you about that um, in the conference. Um, the other uh, major capability of uh, the um, Good Sound no uh, Social Edition release uh, that we announced uh, new at Lotus Screen this year, couldn't even talk about it when I was here in Sydney last year, um, is a Notes browser plugin. So, what my engineering team did is they came up with a way to deploy the Notes client into a browser uh, without having to have the client. Uh, it's a plugin. And, oh, that's a plugin. <laughs> No longer do you have to have the client on the desktop. Um, you can run all your notes apps. Um, if they run in the notes basic configuration today, they'll, they'll work in the browser. Um, so this is really to the point of web and mobile first. So if you remember when we talked about Project Vulkan as our blueprint a few years back, we don't talk about Vulkan anymore because uh, once you start building, you kind of walk away from the blueprint, right? And then you're, you're delivering, right? So Node Social Edition, I know Social Edition very much based on Project Vulkan. One of the key tenets was web and mobile first. We really want those to be first class experiences. I talked about what we've done in the traveler space already. Um, in the browser, we're really trying to deliver the exact same capabilities that you're used to having in the notes client. Okay. Um, X pages uh, continue to um, uh, have tremendous investment. Again, I'll talk about this more. There's a breakout session this afternoon, uh, tomorrow, uh, on uh, X pages. Many of you attended training, uh, I guess, yesterday on X pages as well. Uh, I heard that was quite successful, so uh, uh, definitely the lingua franca for building new applications on the Domino uh, platform today. And uh, many of our partners are embracing these uh, open technologies, XPages, uh, Open Social 2.0, uh, the uh, ability to do programmability in the connection platform. So we want to continue to encourage the, the ecosystem uh, around these to, to build that kind of integration. And I know several of these partners are represented here in the room. And um, mobility, um, uh, like 10, I get paid to quote Sandy Carter in presentations. So uh, Sandy has adopted the term solo mo uh, from somewhere in the industry, social, local, mobile. Um, so uh, solo local. Uh, this is the idea of just making sure that we're pervasive, right? And today, we at IBM have the best collaboration story on mobile devices in the marketplace. Uh, we went from being a follower, uh, a laggard in the space where um, you know, every new device came out that supported Microsoft and never supported us to where we have the most complete set of capabilities across iOS, Android, Blackberry by the end of this year, even Windows Phone. But when I was in Sydney, I asked you if you cared about Windows Phone, and you did, but we decided to do it anyway. Um, <laughs> hedging our bets. Uh, anybody care about Windows Phone? I got, oh, I got two more hands that I didn't send to us. <laughs> That's a 200% increase. <laughs> um, so uh, we're doing, basically what it boils down to is we'll do a full accuracy implementation for Traveler, and we'll run on any device now. So that's really what we should have done in the first place. And, uh, so that's good. Um, so the last, in terms of the technology for us, is um, the idea of where the cloud is going. I haven't talked about cloud that much. But all of these concepts apply, whether you're talking about on-premises deployment of software or cloud. You know, as much to do as an IT person, regardless of delivery model, um, you know, thinking about adoption, thinking about championing, thinking about security, thinking about bandwidth. Um, we have rebranded what was Lotus Live to IBM Smart Hub for social business, going in the wrong direction in a number of words. Um, but you can refer to that as Smart Hub Social, and that is pretty much the same as Lotus Live in terms of syllables. Um, the idea is all of IBM's cloud offerings are now under the Smart Cloud banner, um, so that's good. That means we have lots of IBMers who will talk about Smart Cloud Social, uh, e-meetings, download-based uh, Smart Cloud Notes, uh, uh, all the capabilities and connections that are available in Smart Cloud, some of the new things that we'll add during 2012 and beyond. So regardless of what you think about delivery, public cloud, private cloud, uh, we have solutions in the IBM Smart Cloud family, uh, or we'll continue to ship the best possible software we can for you to deploy in your own uh, premises and All right. Now, let's take some, take some time for demos. I think the people are done with me being a talking head up here. So Stuart is joining us. 
shoot someone's cut. Thanks, Ed. All right. All right. So um, what I'm going to show you is, is what basically what Ed was just talking about. So this is the fun bit where you get to see some of this stuff in action. I'll start out by looking a bit at connections next and how that can benefit the employee, uh, how IBM Docs is embedded in that, the enhancements in the community space, some of the mobile bit, and then we'll move on to a bit of Notes Social Edition uh, and the enhancements in iNotes. So let's get started. That would help if I had the right one. I don't want to show you the second demo first. Or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just like the okay. So this is uh, Connections Next. You can see it's a nice, uh, clean look. Um, yeah, less is more, the strategy that we're going with. And as, said, this, as Ed said, this is uh, planned for second half. What you're seeing here on the front page is the activity stream. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of different stuff embedded. So uh, where it's coming from, you know, your traditional sources or, or stuff like someone sending you a, uh, an image here, it becomes an embedded experience where you can click on an app without moving away from the page. I can preview the image if I'm going into you know, a, a different thing like um, you know, a trial log app here. Um, I can see my project management information clicking in context without moving out, making more, me more efficient and you know, just making things a whole bunch easier. Even SAP allows me to dive in there and uh, act, transact against the data, not only view it directly. Uh, the other thing you mentioned was the concept of connections mail. So right here, up here, um, oh, I should mention actually this works for the traditional um, the stuff coming out of connections as well. So if you <coughs> someone sending you a notification, then that will send you the information where you can act on con act in concert in um, context for that as well. Um, in connections mail, you see right up here in the top, we've got access to our mail, and we've got the same contextual actions. The simple mail interface where you can do you know the less is more approach. Calendar information as well. Again, being driven in that web 2.0 sense, where you're not changing pages to get to information. One of the interesting things about this is we're catering not only for the 348 people in the room, but also the other two who are running Exchange in the back end. <laughs> uh, one of the concepts that um, has proven very successful is this notion of sharing um, in, 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 from, from everywhere that you are, whether it's status updates, files, or other parts. So moving seamlessly from one mode of interacting, whether it's email or blog post or wiki, into another. And sharing becomes a, a first class action uh, in Connections Next. But this is, uh, this is a, a great bit. If, if I dwell down into a, a particular document here, and you'll see this looks moderately familiar for those of you who've seen Connections as a, a detail page for a file. I've got all my normal actions in there about looking at the comment train or downloading it. And versions and, and recommendations, but I've got this great new button in there that allows me to click on edit and pops me straight into IBM Docs. It's a seamless integration like that. Once I'm in the document, it's not only all the document editing stuff, but I can do things like taking a section of the document and saying, hey, um, you know, you should work on this. Right. So here I'm selecting an existing activity from connections. I'm choosing someone to assign it to, so I'm choosing Frank and I can give him a due date or a description, you know, ask him to review or to write a particular section, and that gets, that gets annotated in the document as a to-do and an activity for Frank. So I think this is going to make connections even more usable. All right, let's have a look at, at what's happening in the community space, because this doesn't just, just happen in the individual's uh, activity view. In the communities, there's some great enhancements. So the activity stream moves into the community as well. So at a glance, you can see what's been happening within the community, where previously you might have had to dive, dive into the individual services within the community. You can have status shared directly within the community. 
in your status, you can do things like sharing images. You can like items. I wonder where we got that idea from. You can uh, put hashtags in and track them as well. Another idea that uh, IBM's borrowed. It's all about sharing. So communities become a lot easier to use in that sense as the sort of uh, the activity stream comes in here. One of the great bits is as a community owner, I can dive in and see how my community is actually performing. So I've got metrics built into the product that allow me to dive in and see participation, most active people, most active content, all sorts of different useful metrics for a community owner. You don't have to be an admin to get into this stuff. Of course, the same sort of metrics are available at an admin level across the whole system built into connections. And you can extend it further with our other analytics um, products as well. So in the mobile space, we haven't been, uh, we haven't been asleep there. In the mobile space, we've got uh, all sorts of uh, good things. Right? With the um, Symphony viewers out there, you can now, if someone sends you an open document format item, you can open it directly on your iPad. All the normal sort of uh, touch interactions to swipe through screens and, and do all that nice stuff. But of course, there's another place you might want to open this, and that would be inside your Connections app on your iPad. So opening a, a file from your email will allow you to put <coughs> a, a comment against it and upload it directly into Connections into your, into your My Files area. We haven't forgotten um, people who aren't in the uh, Apple ecosystem. Um, you know, we've made, though we've made the, the connections app very full featured, and if you, if you look here, you can see you can get it all the normal sort of business card ideas on profiles, activities, blogs, the whole features in there. We've also done the same sort of thing in the Android world. And um, you know, so we're not, we're not just uh, working on a single OS. Uh, the, the mobile space is a premium interface for us now, and we're working actively to make it work, to make it work across that number of devices, as it said, said. One thing I should mention, if you look up the top there, same time. Right? On Apple devices, you might not be aware, but they, they're, they're, they're mail. Why they mail? Well, they only do one thing at once. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm talking for myself here. Anyway. <laughs> Um, if you want to get stay logged in the same time, you have to leave same time running in the foreground. But now with our integration into Apple's push server mechanism, you can seamlessly use the Apple notification system and leave same time to be running in the background. And we do have you have you uh, available and uh, able to be contacted when you're on the road or around without without um, uh, having to leave it uh, logged in in the foreground, which is a, a, a great advance and makes it useful. The other nice integration, integration with a unified telephony. So we now have partner solutions for a soft phone, an iPad device, so you can make and receive your calls uh, directly from within, from within that device. Okay, this is a bit you no doubt wanted to see. So this was the um, uh, Notes Social Edition. Um, this is not a, a finish I should point out. Um, you probably still have the activity screen here. This is going to be more of an updates page, and, and on that you'll get multiple sort of social plugins rather than perhaps the inbox showing in there. But it's the same concept as I was showing in connections. In your um, inbox here, you'll have the same idea of opening things and acting directly within them in context. Yeah, saving down to those three clicks to any bit of information I did. Right. Removing the need to switch context and lose track of what it is that you're working on. Right. And these embedded experiences are done via a standard called Open Social for uh, how you extend widgets to, to work um, in a social fashion. The same things that I opened previously, so like uh, here we've got a Lombardi business process. Um, we've got the uh, project management from Trilog Project Zect, where I can open and interact with it directly in my inbox as well. I'll just refresh my inbox here and you'll see I've got a, uh, a, a new item here. So this is a 
notification for a review directly from an ex-pages app appearing in my inbox and from an ex-pages app I can do the same acting as an embedded experience directly in my client. Makes the whole thing seamless and easy to use. Of course, XPages is not just uh, producing information here, but can also, as you see in this XPages app, consume activities, consume forum information, consume information from across your social aspect through connections. So that's what I wanted to show you in the employee space. Um, stay tuned for the next demo uh, after we throw back to Ted. So what I'm going to take you through uh, to kind of set up, which is, you know, how do we start to leverage some of these technologies? In fact, uh, in many cases, the same technologies, but more driven for the consumer space, right? How do you better network with your customers, your existing customers, and potential customers? And what are the right solutions and technologies that we provide at IBM to make that easy, to make that possible, to push that away from an IT job and move that into a line of business job? If it's someone in marketing, uh, if it's someone in customer service, how can you start to better manage and create your website and have a two-way dialogue? Um, a couple of different things that uh, I want to highlight. This is why we've used for a while, reach engagement. <coughs> Fundamentally, you know, we've had a what we call our customer experience suite. And this is fundamentally what it makes up here. The, the three things we're trying to do, reach. How do you reach? a specific customer or a partner if you kind of build out a healthier <coughs> ecosystem and what are the different types of devices different operating systems mobile tablets kiosks right so how do we fundamentally support all those different ways that we can reach an employee from engage how do i create optimize and target pieces of content if i know a user's coming in because he did a search and he found me through uh, google or bing or whatever your thing is how can we pick up on that? What if they clicked on a Facebook ad to get to your specific website? Right? What if it was through an email campaign? How can I know where that user's coming from and start to start to target that? When you think about email campaigns, you think, oh, that's, that's pretty simple. Um, but when you, when you start to peel that young in, there's really some very interesting, complex things that we can tie together marketing campaigns, specifically with content that we're driving on a website. Everyone in this room has probably got an email with a link to click on it to go buy a product or service. When you click on that, it just sends you off to the website. The work that we're starting to do is that, well, we know you clicked on that link, so we know you came from an email. We know we sent you that email because we profiled you on our system to go ahead and send you that email. So we already know a little bit about you. So as soon as you click on that, we automatically know who you are. And if Ed and I get the same identical emails, with the same identical URLs to click on, it knows that Ed lives in Chicago, I live in Boston. If it's uh, trying to sell a sports gear, well, guess what? Same URL, it's automatically in a profile, pick up, hey, I'm looking for the Boston Red Zones, Boston Bruins. Ed's looking for, uh, what, what do you get there, the black, black box of beers, yeah, the, uh, the Cubs, that's fall sports, and Chicago's not having a very good uh, century. Uh, in terms of uh, Boston's having a fantastic decade out there. As well as how do, you, uh, how do you integrate all these with your existing applications that you have on the back end? And fundamentally, that's the, this is the, the solution set that we're trying to build out. Now, in order to do this and to make it easier for organizations to ad adapt to the new solutions and technologies, and IBM is going through lots of acquisitions out there, um, we can't just wait for the next version of a major release to take advantage of this. So something that we're introducing is now, you know, more efficient and faster ways for organizations built in leveraging our technologies today to take advantage of new templates, to take advantage of new integration points that we have within IBM collaboration solutions, whether it be same time connections, but with the broader IBM, whether it be FileNet, whether it be something from our analytics, whether it be um, something with business process management, a new update to that. All right, so we're, we're now making it much more easier to start to leverage these uh, capabilities. Ed brought up the fact that we've gone through lots of different uh, acquisitions around analytics over the years. Uh, 
fundamentally for these websites, how do we start to leverage um, some of these analytics and, and uh, effect? Um, so how do we start to leverage uh, specifically core metrics in Unica for campaign management, for web analytics, for web traffic? In fact, we'll see a, a demo in just a little bit of all these different integration points. And if you think about how analytics typically work today, you, you have a website, if you're lucky, you have another website where all your analytics are generated in a dashboard form. If you're really unlucky, which most customers are, you get that spreadsheet of URLs and click counts that you're getting. So, you're, so you're, you're managing your website in one space, and you're managing analytics in another space. How can you start to overlay those two? And that's exactly what line of business is looking for. When I'm looking at my specific website, I just don't want to know what the click count and uh, is on that specific website, but the different campaigns, the different pieces of content that I'm even running on that specific website, right? How can I overlay that, make it very easy for me to make changes, view what's working, what's not working, extended campaigns, so on and so forth. Um, something else that we're working on uh, is much more tighter integration with the Connections products that is something we call community pages, which make it really easy for IT or line of business to leverage uh, an existing page that they have within their portal environment, or even create a new page, and seamlessly and once tie that to a new and existing community that you have in Connections, really treating community as a back-end service. And so if you have a, uh, an HR page that you've had out there forever where you talk about uh, travel expenses and benefits and everything else that HR has to do with, and they want to maybe start to leverage self-help, or start to socialize that page and have more of a two-way dialogue. You can at least turn that on and you can connect that page with a specific community. And then as you just put the portlets, you want to put a wiki portlet on the page, you want to put a blogs portlet on the page, you want to put a discussion forum portlet on the page, it's automatically going to leverage, leverage the services in the back end through the connection environment and keep the users integrated on that page. Before, when we were putting portlets on the page, we kind of took the approach that it was going to consume the entire page. That's no longer the case. You can have one page out there with a community from connections, a uh, piece of web content management, and some level of integration with an existing CRM system, <coughs> all sitting on that one page, all wired, all connected, all talking uh, to one another. Um, so with that said, I'm actually going to turn it back over to uh, Stuart. He can kind of take us through um, what an exceptional customer experience might look like. Thanks, Dave. All right, got the right one this time. It's a good start. So what I'm going to show you here is, first of all, we'll start off with an iPad view. You can see if you look closely on the website and how this web technology in the customer experience suite can work across mobile devices with things like responsive web design, touch. We're going to edit it, show how that is done easily in context, how the same content can be pushed through the traditional browser, how the analytics are overlaid, same content through other channels like commerce, and then finally we finish up and look at the, the community idea and bringing social to the web as well. But let's start out when we look at this iPad site. And if I scroll down here, you see you've got multiple sort of four columns down the bottom there. And with it flipped over, we get a thing called responsive web design, where it automatically tails itself to the device in the available viewing window. And you see here that we've got uh, templates and themes available now that allow your content to be repurposed across a variety of devices and tailor itself accordingly. Other, you know, other aspects of the device that you want to use. You want to use things like here, where I can swipe across and use you know, things that you can't do as easily traditionally with a mouse, but you can certainly do with a finger uh, with the touch idea on the channel. But um, we're on an internal server here, so let's go in and edit it. You see here, as an editor, I've got these extra controls. I can pull down from the top. I can go and look at the content. So I can look at the campaigns that I've got running that are inserting targeted content. But let's look at the pizza. Pizza's out of vogue this week, and let's, uh, maybe we should uh, replace it with something that might be a bit healthier, like uh, mussels marinara at the top there. But first, let's check the content. You can see at the moment I've got uh, mussels publishing on Facebook and mobile. 
but I can easily push the content out to multiple different places like uh, my commerce site and my website by selecting it there. Um, if I wanted to do something like check that the content's right, you know, 41 seconds is a bit too long as a video, let's uh, pull it down here a little uh, and uh, check that it looks right. So this, as you can see, what we're seeing is a much easier business-focused editing experience for your web content. I can dive in and see who's done what to it, linked in with the social motion. So I can see that Samantha's uh, made some comment on the, on the content. I can see the status of where it is in the workflow and dive right in. When I'm happy with my muscles marinara, it's quite easy for me to then just pick it up and uh, drag it and replace my pepperoni with my muscles. A nice, simple editing experience. Now, if we switch over to our traditional website, you can see we've got the same sort of live uh, content appearing. If I dive into the right spot here, uh, I can see that I've got the same video appearing on another channel. So all for once, have it appear across multiple channels. I've got social content embedded as well. So uh, recipes coming from customers contributing, what people are thinking, comments that people are making. So users are engaging and gaining a level of trust and interacting through feeling that the company is not some nameless beast but something that actually interacts with them, with real people. Other kinds of things you can do to get that, to, to gain that trust, is also through working with mechanisms like interacting in, in more traditional sort of gaining information ways. So here I've got a, a survey form where I can directly you know, gain information, maybe new product ideas or other thoughts from people. Um, because I'm an editor here, I can jump in and I'll show you quickly part of our new forms design tool. So it's a very easy GUI based layout of forms and, and workflows and capturing and analysing the information in the context of my page. Of course, I've got all this great content out there. Um, I want to know what happens to it. I want to know what should I be changing based upon what people are doing. So as an administrator in my little actions toolbar here, amongst all the other actions, I've got the ability to dive into my analytics. I'm not jumping out to a separate tool, I'm doing it in context again. And that overlays for me for each of these sections across the pages they're used on. How many times are they being used? But not only that, things like <coughs> captured sentiment from the interaction through social, what people are thinking, as well as the captured results from my surveys. And I can even drill down into those across my different channels. So you see here, and I've got a, a, a drop down here uh, for mobile, commerce. If I flick on commerce, you'll see the results change. Let's flip over to commerce. Go over to our commerce site. You might have, um, you know, if you get uh, bombarded by marketing, you would have heard IBM use the term smarter commerce. So our commerce solution seamlessly integrates in this same stuff. As you can see, the customer experience suite allows you to embed the same content, the videos, the survey tools, the social content in the same experience. Here we've got on the voting side, using the ideation blocks from Connections, we have customers voting on favourite ideas, favourites they don't want to do. Making it really easy you know, from, from integrating your social side into your, your audio sides of the business. But talking about integrating socially, uh, uh, Ted mentioned the whole community pages con uh, idea, the idea of bringing social to your website and how easy it was. Let's turn off the analytics here so that we can see it more easily. And what I'm going to do is create a new page from a template and link it to a community. So I create a new tile page, give it a, a nice explanatory name of community, and then I'm choosing a template. So this is using a new templating ability and I'll choose one of my community templates down the bottom here for a customer community. 
because I've chosen a, a community-based template, it's given me the additional option of creating a community to associate with it, but for demo purposes, I'll choose one with content in it already. So I'll choose an existing community and select that from my drop-down. Creating the page, creates the page for me, deploys all the parts onto the page, and links them automatically with the correct community. That's pretty easy. Doesn't get a lot harder than that. And you can see in here, I've got an activity stream, I've got membership, I've got my same content, again, pushed across multiple channels. You can push it to Facebook other areas as well, as well as other social tools like blogs and forums, directly available there in my external web presence. So I'm interacting. I'm not publishing any longer for my website. I'm really interacting with my customer group and everyone's gaining more value out of it. Thank you very much.